This is the Magic Word Podcast.com. We are now starting the beginning of a full day here, which is uh, officially day two. Yesterday was a half day, which seemed like a full day. A lot of stuff going on, but we're getting kicked off here at breakfast. And before long, we're going to be having the close-up contest uh, last evening after we closed. I told you there was the Chad Long lecture, followed by uh, I went back up in the room and put the uh, podcast together. But at uh, 11 o'clock was uh, Chip Romero's presentation of uh, Great Leon's Haunted House, which was really uh, interesting and a pretty thorough uh, history and everything. But uh, this morning we're uh, going to soon be having the contest, and one of the people who's going to be sitting watching the contest, not as a judge, but just uh, in his own mind judging, perhaps. <laughs> My friend and yours also, who's one of the performers here this week and lectured, Mr. Doug Kahn. Hey, Doug, good to see you. Good morning, Scott. <laughs> Always good to uh, chat with you. I didn't get to see Chad's lecture last night because I was working on that uh, podcast, so tell me what I missed over Chad's lecture. Yeah, uh, Fun, uh, you know, Chad is just like uh, going to the circus, but at a magic <laughs> lecture. So, uh, yeah, Chad Long, you know. If you haven't seen Chad, you've missed out one of the best, funnest magic experiences in, you know, magicopia. Even if you have seen his lecture before, it's always a little bit different because the way he improvises so much is funny. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah, I've seen Chad, you know, wow, we've crossed paths 20 times in our life, but I made sure to be there knowing I'd see a lot of the same material I'd seen before and also knowing I'd have a great time, and I was right on both accounts. Yeah. Uh, what did you think about Chip's uh, presentation last wow, night? Wow, what a joy that was, you know. And Chip's a dear friend of mine, and what a great historian he's become over the last 10, 20 years, and that really show, show, showed last night with this presentation of the, the Great Leon, the history of this piece. And then he broke into some professional routines. What a great uh, time right. to Did see him. Bag. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And killed it, you know, killed it. <laughs> He had a funny story, I thought, what he was, before he did the egg bag, telling about how that some guy, when he was working a cruise ship, just walked by and said, hey, nice egg bag. And he said, wait a minute, you just can't say that. He said, who are you? And he said, I'm Johnny Thompson's son. <laughs> yeah, and to bring that story all full circle, where he had seen Johnny Thompson do that routine at the TAOM in 1970, whatever, and here we are 50 and, and years later. And then he actually bought the bag. And now he's got Johnny Thompson's egg bag. And he got through Potter and Potter. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. what a great job he does with that prop. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can tell that he's done that several times. I mean, his timing and everything. What did you think about last evening's show, by the way? Uh, you know, I came in I came in late last night, and I missed it. So I was in the room uh, getting ready for the lectures, and I missed the show. Okay. So it was a very good comment. show. Very, very I'm sure it was. Uh, and so today you're going to be lecturing at 3 o'clock, and you're going to be the professional close-up show tomorrow. Is that right? Look, looking forward to doing some old-school professional close-up shows, you know? And uh, today, are you going to be not only teaching tricks, but also talking a little about a little bit about being a YouTube star? Yeah, you know, my le- my current lecture is a, a bit of theory on street performing, my pivot to social media, and then I do some original close-up magic, and we talk about how all that works for me in a modern era. How often do you do street performing anymore? So I'm really picky these days. It used yeah. to be like a full-time job. Now I'll go out on the weekends and right. do two or three hours. Mainly these days it's with an intent of capturing some video for social media, more so than collecting money in hats. It's, uh, do you set up like a little GoPro or something, or do you have someone actually film it for you? Uh, currently I'm using the Insta Insta Cam 360, which is a 360 camera that captures front, back, above, below. That way I get audience reactions and all the ambience in addition to the magic. I also use my cell phone, and that's set up on a tripod as well. It's a one-man show. Yeah, when we were at the uh, Pebble uh, earlier this year, I think you used that uh, that camera, didn't you? Yeah, I do generally set it up pretty much wherever I go, and I do endorse this for all professionals to film their material. This camera is a small unit, and you know it's a great way to review your sets, even if you're not using the material for social media and so on. You know, it's a great way to capture your shows. Just to go back and take a look and see yeah. what you. Yeah. yeah, and it fits in your pocket. It's like you know. That was a, kind of amazing. I remember when you set it up, and the, the tripod, of course, was a lot larger than just the little thing. It was looked like almost a little bit larger than a flash drive or something. You know, yeah, something. right. It's, it's like two thumbs. You know, it's like the size of two thumbs, and it basically sets up on a selfie stick, which vanishes in post. So the selfie stick uh, erases itself in the production process, and this camera becomes, in a sense, uh, like a drone that can, you know... And what's it called again? The Instacam 360. Okay, and it's available through Amazon or wherever? Yeah, that's where I got it. Mm-hmm. Okay, very cool. Uh, and then you would go back and... Uh, 
put the material together. I mean, you know, you have some good shows or whatever uh, to upload to uh, to YouTube. Do you find the work that you're doing on the weekends when you go back and do uh, the street performing in New Orleans? to be a job or is it just something fun that you like to do at this point in your life so always fun if it's not fun i don't do it you know i think that uh, inhibits the flow of that kind of process specifically street performing put yourself out in an environment where if it's apparent you're not really enjoying yourself people get it and they won't stay with you to have fun <laughs> yeah so um, yeah, it's uh, I go out there to enjoy myself, and then everything falls in place from there. Do you find new people coming in to New Orleans who are trying to find their own niche, that, and they've that, heard about New Orleans? That has been a constant <laughs> for thirty years of my life, and I've seen some amazing train wrecks and some amazing successes. Hmm. You know, okay. it's a very challenging environment to street perform in New Orleans, and uh, it, it's a great way to become very good or to be beat up very quickly so <laughs> almost physically huh i mean really it, it could happen yeah <laughs> <laughs> well tell me about i'm always interested like in a train wreck what have you seen like somebody in which the audience takes charge or something and the guy just it just says oh i'm then yeah, just, just you know, discouraged in new orleans it can get double weird because we you know we have open container laws where people are roaming around with drinks in their hand and half drunk to begin with and then yeah <laughs> and they're not used to being in this situation you know like you get a little bit out of hand a little a little faster than you might be used to so uh it can get weird out there for sure yeah. well you know along that line i've had conversations about this uh, about will smith and the slap you know yep. that was on the oscars a few years ago with chris yep. rock and it, I, I felt like that that was going to be a demarcation in which that it essentially gives the audience the it breaks that fourth wall that even they can walk up on stage and it's like hey he did it on the Oscars you know what's to prevent me from going up to hitting someone on, in a yeah. comedy club or particularly when you're a street performer and you're walking by if you don't like the guy particularly if you've been drinking or something yeah. they might have you found that audiences are more belligerent of late than they were before were they more respectful or is it the same you know it's uh, I, I would say, for the most part, they're respectful. The problem comes in the X factor on the street performing, where you might have someone who's mentally challenged or, again, inebriated and just has no filter whatsoever to make a decision about interrupting the show. You know, they just... You know, crazy people do crazy things, and it happens a lot in the wild. Oh, then you just have to shut down the show. In other words, if there's somebody that you just can't handle, I mean, you know how to handle hecklers, but at some point, like if they're emotionally disabled yeah. or whatever, I mean, you just got to say, okay, thanks, we'll move on. Right. And it's rare that it comes to that, but it does come to that on occasion. So, okay. What about sp uh, picking out your spot? So that's a process that you learn through, uh, you know, dealing with different environments. You know, in New Orleans, we'll show up early in the morning to get a spot maybe two or three hours later in the day you know and what's early for you i mean is that 10 a.m or is that uh, i get on the pitch about 8 30 or 9 to get the good spots and i'm usually not performing until 11 12 so two or three hours early and you can expect to be in a line a line of three or four people in new orleans uh, it's when you all... say in line do they take turns or mm -hmm. huh. yeah so it's first come first serve and then you know we use a little decorum about you know doing unto others as you'd have them do unto you, right? Because <laughs> you know you're going to probably see them tomorrow. Right, and not everyone plays fair in the arena. Some people are, are a little more selfish and, and don't share, and, and uh, you know, bad apples in every Now, bunch. you live in New Orleans, so that you can go down there on a regular basis. But I'm thinking about some people like Cellini and who've been kind of touring, or used to, yeah. go up to New York and they travel with the weather, basically, or down to the Keys or whatever. Do you have a lot of people or friends you kind of see annually, say, hey, I'll see you next year? Or? Very much so, and... It, <laughs> The life of a professional street performer is very much one that's on the move. You know, it's rare that you can be in a locale year-round because of the weather. You do need to travel, and yeah, because of that, I do see a lot of people coming through town on tour regularly. What's the best time of the year for people, or typically the... The, the big tour season for New Orleans, it starts in late October and runs through early early April. You know, the the summer months are unbearably hot, so it's time to leave New Orleans. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, head north, someplace yeah, cooler. North Europe, yeah. yeah, Canada. Have you ever competed at, like in a um, busker festival? You know, I haven't. As we sit here at the TAOM, I had my one and only competition experience when I was a young man, and it broke me as I made some bad mistakes. <laughs> Never again, huh? It was a one of. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <Fine>. memories. <laughs> 
<laughs> and not good ones particularly. Yeah, I, I was doing sleeving material. <laughs> I walked in the first room and I knocked a chair over and I bent down to pick up the chair and everything falls out of my sleeve. I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> well, this experience right. is over. <laughs> so the judges, I guess so you know how that's done. <laughs> Ski yeah. Okay. So. Well, Doug, always good uh, talking with you and uh, seeing you at all the different conventions uh, over this last year as, as well. It was kind of funny as I've just recently moved and I was going through a bunch of books. Tom Vorjahan was helping me unpack some boxes and he pulled out the Doug Kahn book, you know, from my, yeah. out of the box and put it back on the shelf. So I'll take this with you and have Doug sign it. And I said, uh, you'll notice he's probably already signed that. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, we, we've, we've crossed path a few times. And, and hey, I'll see you again in November at Trix, <laughs> right? See yeah. you at Charlotte. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big year for conventions for both of us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Doug, good talking to you. And I'll uh, good luck later in the uh, with your lecture. Thank you, Scott. Okay. Good so the Magic Word Podcast. That was Doug Kahn, Scotty S. Well, as we said, this is of course the uh, beginning of the first full day, and we just had the close-up competition. And right now, uh, Chris Carter's got a lecture that's going on. But uh, I wanted to uh, get a chance to sit down and talk with a guest of honor for the convention, and he's been pulled in so many different directions, including last evening and being one of the star performers who was featured in the evening show. Uh, after 25 years of uh, being Merlin the magician, now he continues to be none other than the ubiquitous Mr. Bill Palmer. Hey there, Bill. Hey there, Scott. <laughs> So glad that you're here. Congratulations on this honor, too. Oh, I'm, I'm, I tell you what, I am so amazed that they would even consider honoring me for anything. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I'm basking in my glory, I guess. I, I, I'm loving it, and I, I'm trying not to, not to pontificate too much, but I'm, I'm here to talk to some of the, especially the new guys, yeah. and, and not just the young new guys. Because there's a lot of old new guys, people who have just retired from being accountants or being lawyers or whatever, and they're, they're learning how to think like magicians. Right. And it's different. We aren't the same as, as other people. We look That's at, your point. We look at a piece of, of yarn, and we think of, of immediately of breaking it into pieces and putting it back together. Well, it's like, like John Carney, John uh, Cornelius had already, always said, is the hardware store, hardware store is his toy shop or magic shop. That's exactly right. I have been with John when he walked into, into a place like Home Depot or yeah. whatever. He could walk from the front to the back of a room of hardware, and he could invent six tricks before he got to the counter. <laughs> and, and then he would, would go through those six tricks, and he would decide which one or two were, yeah. were possibly marketable. And he may end up with not with nothing that he could do on that trip, but maybe he'd have something he could file away in his memory banks for later. Uh, it was John was a, was a, a real trip in many ways. I'm glad we're talking about him because what I want to discuss a little bit with you is because of your years in the TAOM, uh, some of the memories you have of going back and whether that I, I know that Willard the Wizard actually had performed here, and you know, and you're named Willard, of course, yeah. <laughs> but by coincidence or. It has you know, absolute coincidence, and okay. nothing more. <laughs> and in fact, uh, I, I know several members of the Willard family. That was his, their last name, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, I knew Francis. I knew uh, uh, they used to have uh, uh, New Year's dinner with uh, Donnie Carnegie, and the Willards would come over. The, I think Gene was one of them that was still around here, and uh, we'd talk about about sometimes about the Willard show, but we didn't really discuss it right. that much. But I did get to see Willard one time, uh, and that was, was that? at the TAOM in 1960 at the Shamrock. Uh, it was my first magic convention, and I had my first contact lenses, and my eyes were all inflamed because I'd been up for 36 hours, <laughs> and I could barely see anything, but I could hear, the, I, I heard the Willard the Wizard show. <laughs> and uh, later on, I got to know uh, Francis and... Uh, and and Falkenstein. Did they, did they do their spirit cabinet at the uh, TAOM? I don't remember. Okay. But because uh, I was way in the back of the room, I, I know they did Noah's Ark. Okay. And that 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 I do remember that. Any other well. memories of uh, TAOM's past of someone or some show or some event that happened? That oh, sticks out? I, I met uh, Tom Palmer when he and Gloria were were still married. Gloria, uh, that but later became Gloria Markham. And Tom that Palmer, was, who later uh, became Tony Andrews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I pretty well knew the, knew his backstory. So when they talked to him about about moving to Chicago to get away from the mob, 
that's when the quote about moving to Chicago to get away from the mob is like uh, moving into the forest to get away from the fire or moving into the <laughs> freezer to get away from the cold. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I think, uh, was it uh, T.A. Waters that published the, the book Unspeakable Acts? That was, mm-hmm. that was a, the one about uh, Tony Andrusi. That's the first time I've said that, that name. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 used it as a reference. He was always Tom Palmer, mm-hmm. and, and we're not related. But we and were, so you remember, of course, the uh, the act that later became Johnny Thompson's great Tom Sawyer. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I did, I do. And uh, now, Johnny Thompson, uh, I remember meeting him at the TAOM in Houston, uh, which I think was 1990, uh, 1976. Yeah, that was nineteen seventy six. It was the bicentennial year because uh, Harry Blackstone Jr. performed at that convention and performed at a couple of other towns around us doing his bicentennial act. But uh, I met uh, Tom Sony. I, I had just seen a couple of things by him. I'd never actually seen him in person. And uh, Ed Compagna asked me if they could borrow my my tape deck. I had a, a Revox studio machine that was portable. And I said, sure, I don't mind doing that. And I brought it in and uh, I, I gave it to to Johnny and I said, you know, I'm a big admirer of your work. And he said, I don't know how to take a compliment, man. I said, take it as it's intended. And later on, John, uh, Tom, Sony, and, and Pam and I got to be good friends when he was working at Magic Island because I, I emceed his show several times. Mm-hmm. And I knew his cues, which the MC had to know because right. the MC was the guy that made the bowling ball happen and right. made, I made, you know, made it roll out on stage and all that. And uh, he performed at the TAOM and Tyler. I remember that, and I came up to him when he was talking to the guy who was president of TAOM then. I said, hey, Johnny, you need a, a trained stage hand for your show tomorrow? He says, yep. I said, okay, I'll, be, I'll, I'll meet you at the theater. And that was it. And, uh, was know, that the uh, convention in Tyler when Markham fell off the stage? Yep. Okay. That was the one, yeah. the one where he disappeared. He yeah. disappeared right yeah. straight. One, two, three, boom, into yeah. the orchestra pit. Is there a lawyer in the house? <laughs> well, Gloria was sitting right in front of me, uh-huh. and everybody in the theater was laughing except for her. She leaned forward and said, oh, my gosh. And she was the only one who knew immediately yeah. that was yeah. not. Yeah. That was not planned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, it was kind of funny. That, that was the, that, I think that was the same night that, I got to the theater a little late because Tom Sony needed some some hamburger patties for the Chihuahuas. Hmm. You know, they always travel with those two Chihuahuas. Right. And so I, I drove him over to a Whataburger and we got our, or to a Burger King <laughs> one and we picked up a couple of, of, of hamburgers for the for the, the dogs yeah. without without mayonnaise, without anything but a bun. <laughs> you know, two uh, Plain uh, naked. Uh, yeah. b- naked hamburgers. <laughs> And uh, I mean, that, Tom Sony was—he was an interesting character, and a, a, he was a delightful guy. And he had a brain on him the size of, of a house. I mean, he was—he invented so much stuff that people don't even know he invented. Mm-hmm. He invented the Al Coran deck, and gave it to Al, and let Al take the credit for it. Yeah, huh. that's the one that he used with that Nemo fifteen hundred wallet. You know, he was a, he was a, just a, yep. you know, a trade great, show worker and cruise yeah, ships and yeah, everything. Yeah, he was a good, he was a, just a really terrific guy. Yeah. I, I really miss him. I, I'd, I'd see him every time I went to Vegas. Right. And, and same with Pam. But anyway, that's a, that's neither here nor there. Well, you, you, um, you talk about the Shamrock. That hotel is long gone. I remember Walter Blaney, I think. Well, I know he was the president back when it was in the Shamrock. I recall the uh, story about uh, the SAM Assembly 19's charter was signed by Harry Houdini, which apparently hung there in the Shamrock Hotel where they used to meet. Mm-hmm. And so when it was demolished, I guess that went with it because nobody knows where that is now. Oh, gee, I, you know, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. So it, it may be around somewhere. That may have actually gotten uh, gotten sold during the distribution of pieces. I have a souvenir of the, of the Shamrock myself that Herbie Brockstein, who was the guy that, that founded Brockstein Music Company and Promark Drumsticks, mm-hmm. uh, gave me for performing at, a, at his birthday party. Mm-hmm. It was uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the door uh, things that they put on the back of the door that had the list of the rates and so oh, forth. Oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, and 
but it was a Shamrock rate card. I've got one of those. It's kind of, of course, they had thousands of them or hundreds of them because they had hundreds of rooms. But well, still. the TAOM has always had the different uh, locations where they posted. Like, you know, yeah. this year it's here in the gallery area. We've yeah. had it downtown mm-hmm. uh, at the Hyatt, and they say the Shamrock way back then. We've had yeah. it at different places around um, as well. So um, it has been, you've been attending for so many years. Well, usually this was around the time, I think, that the Renaissance Festival typically started. Oh, wasn't it? I probably, you probably were rehearsing, and so we couldn't make them all? Yeah, yeah that, uh, that, that was part of it. The, the Renaissance Festival would start in the, uh, the, the early part of October, mm-hmm. usually. And, uh, you know, it's been a bit, it's been, been ages. I, I, I made a few of those while I was working the Renaissance Festival. But When's the last time that you put on the uh, Merlin uh, conical hat? Uh, gee, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, I remember. Uh, there was a there's an accordion convention that that before the pandemic used to take place in uh, in Las Vegas. It was called the, the Las Vegas International Accordion Convention, and it was international in two senses of the word. It was sponsored by a company called International Accordions mm-hmm. out of Salt Lake City. And uh, the owner of the thing decided one year to hold the the convention on the the summer solstice. And uh, I said, "Would you like to have the sun rise between the pillars of Stonehenge?" He said, "Well, I was going to have a, a picture of the the stones and the headstone right. with the sun coming up over." I said, "So, how about if you have it without the the sun coming up?" And then it changes into the sunrise uh, coming over the, the hillstone. He says, how would you do that? I said, I'll tell you how to, how to make it and if, you, if you decide you want to do it. And he says, I want to do it. So we rigged up a thing that would, that would make that happen. I won't expose exactly right. how it worked. But, but the thing is, uh, I came out in the Merlin outfit, and I, I had a staff that I had made out of PVC pipe and contact paper, mm-hmm. and it had a really brilliant LED flashlight concealed in it that when I pushed the button with my thumb, it would go straight up into a big Swarovski crystal on the end of it, mm-hmm. and it would radiate this intense light all around the room. And at that point, the, uh, the picture changed. Hmm. Okay. And it looked great in person because everybody's eyes squinted down to, to nothing and right. they couldn't see anything. They were blinded. But it didn't videotape well at all. <laughs> <laughs> so the video is not nearly as good as the actual. It's actually being in person. Yeah. yeah. But it was, it, I, I did that in Merlin Drag. And it was kind of fun because one of my favorite musical groups was there. And Riders in the Sky. Uh, the, the guy that plays accordion with him, Joey Miskelin, was the uh, lead accordion player for Frank Yankovic during his uh, his existence as the polka king? Mm-hmm. You know, he was the he was the polka man, and I mean, these guys worked everywhere. Joey worked from with with Frankie from the, the age of of fourteen or so until uh, until he was well into his forties. Yeah, and uh, Joey's one of the nicest guys in the world. And the group is they're 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 just beautifully great entertainers <clears throat> pardon me I took Walter Blaney to see to see them on my 70th birthday we uh, we, we, went, we went to see them he, he, he said this is such a refreshing thing they work clean they're funny they're great musicians they're, 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 they're wonderful yeah and uh, that was nice you know <laughs> but uh, yeah I, that that's, that, well, that was the last time I did the Merlin. Uh, well, I, I knew you hadn't been doing it in a few years like that. Well, Bill, it's very good to uh, see you. So happy also for the honor that they have uh, given you long overdue uh, with the different accolades you had gotten in this evening's show during a, a little bit of a break there. And so it was great. So congratulations and uh, glad to have you as a friend, my friend. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm glad to have you as a friend too, Scott. Okay. So with the Magic Word Podcast, and that was Bill Palmer. Impact. Remember our pact. I will. Yes. I'm yes. <laughs> okay, don't tell them. Okay, let okay. it be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I may be the guy that tells them the surprise. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Magic All Word right. Podcast. That was Bill Palmer, Scotty Out.
The morning activities have been uh, outstanding, as uh, the rest of the convention has been uh, wonderful also. And we just finished a uh, wonderful lecture that was by Chris Carter. And we're soon going to be having the uh, children's special public show that was originally going to be with Mario the Maker, but uh, C.J. Johnson's filling in because of some medical issues uh, in uh, Mario's family. But I am here right now with the past international president and also Gold Cup winner of the IBM, by the way, <laughs> Mr. Oscar Munoz. Hey, my friend Oscar. How hey, are you? hi, my friend. Doing great. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. You as well. So uh, it's it, you've got a lot of things. You've been busy and traveling and doing yeah, stuff. Yeah, I just so. got back from Detroit. We're looking uh, to do a convention 2012. 26 in Detroit, Michigan. For who and with which convention? Celebrating Houdini's 100th um, years of uh, remembrance. Uh, he, he, um, I'm my, it's 100 years that he's been recognized as a magician, so mm-hmm. I think that's where we're celebrating Houdini. Oh, okay. And you're going to be part of that? You say you're going to be performing? or what? Um, Well, actually, I'm the guy who they sent out to uh, find the place and then lose sleep, uh, get stressed, <laughs> and, you know, everything that comes along sure. about trying to yeah. create a convention. Exactly. But uh, we're also working on it at the same time as doing uh, for the uh, convention in uh, Tacoma, Washington mm-hmm. in, in 2024. For the IBM. Right. For, for the IBM, right. yeah. So I want to get ahead, and we're looking at Dallas for 2025. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. For, for the uh, next IBM. I don't so. think the IBM has been in Dallas. We've had it in San Antonio and Houston, but I don't recall right. we've had it in Dallas. And Dallas is a beautiful place, yeah. and so we're looking for um, venue. A, a venue, yeah. And it's really, really hard to find a hotel that you know gives you low prices as far as rooms are concerned. Right. That's why I was so happy about the combined convention with TAOM and the uh, SAM. Uh, so SAM. Yeah, great, get, great prize. So I suggest everybody... You know, who's listening to this and wants to go to the, the one of the best um, competitions ever, which is the FISM. And only to get to FISM, you got to go through Dallas. So that's a, that's an easier way than going all the way overseas. <laughs> I think it's amazing because a lot of people will see some award-winning act, those w- yes. acts that may be award-winning. You may be see the next FISM. Uh, yeah, our, next, our next, yeah, our next. You, you never know. Uh, like uh, next Lance Burton, uh, now Sean Farquhar, our next. You know, next person who's up there in the caliber. I mean, you, you remember uh, at Magic Live? I saw you there, and you saw the top winner of the stage competition. Right, right, right. right. Which was amazing. I thought that thing actually had legs and arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we swallowed bought it at that ball. I remember that was my favorite act. Oh, yes, I back. agree. And then when I, I was so surprised to see when Stan booked him. It's like, holy cow, you got that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and to know that that kind of quality will be yeah. in Texas and in Dallas with the SAM and TAUM yeah. is going to be phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be great for next year. And uh, as far as this convention goes, you've been attending this for a long number of years. And uh, any uh, memories you've got of this? Oh, man. Watching some acts like Mr. Palmer last night. He brings back, back memories of watching him first perform i mean it, it is he's a treasure trove of information and and just routines as you go oh my god he's going there and he's doing this it's it's fantastic it was fantastic yeah. and and seeing you like yourself here and seeing trixie and seeing dale and seeing all my friends that have been in this uh, magic uh, community it's uh it brings us memory i'll be hitting 60 with godzilla in october Mm-hmm. And boy, but does my body hurt. <laughs> you feel more like 70, huh? Oh, yes, yes. But you look and like 50. You're looking no, great. No, 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 no. I, I feel it. I feel it. But it is, it is it is turned out to be a great convention. I mean, so far, so good, right? Yeah, yep. And I think the, uh, I don't want to say the best is yet to come because we've already had the best, but I think we got the best is yet yeah. more. Right, right, right. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's an add-on bonus. It's That's an right. add-on bonus. Hi. Hey, hi, Penn. Hi. Give me that, uh, you've got your application there. I want to get an application because I want to need the... Uh, oh, yeah, there's some information for, yeah, for the thank people. thank you very much. Okay, so the information, by the way, of where you can go to register online for next year's convention is FISM-NACM.com. That's uh, fism dash. north American Championship uh, Magicians, NACM.com. So. Yeah, and it's going to be held on August the 30th, September the 2nd, 2024, uh, hey, if you're thinking that you can make the North American champions, what do you got to lose? Give it a try. Come and compete. Yeah, yeah. come in and compete. And, yeah, definitely. Uh, and I might point out, too, typically the TAOM convention is four days, or actually three and a half days, essentially. Right, right, We're right. adding another day on this because we have the SAM that's involved with this. So it's so going to be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That's great. That's mo- yeah. more for the buck. That's exactly right. You get yeah. more for the dollars there as well. Uh, now, I do want to talk to you about contests because uh, not only have you competed and won in contests, but right. you and Melody, uh, your wife, have been uh, involved as a contest chairman for the IBM a long number of years. Yeah, so. we've been doing it for a better part of like 10 years. Mm-hmm. 
uh, but it's time for us now to move on. Uh, you know, uh, I always say that no, no um, position in the inter- international brothers and missions is for a lifetime. Mm-hmm. And I think that uh, the people that we have coming up are husband and wife team, mm-hmm. and uh, they have better ideas. Uh, um, Keith Fields and Lady Sarah will be taking our place. Mm-hmm. In 2024, they're shadowing us, and they're uh, going to be uh, taking over the competition. Starting next year in Tacoma. Uh, after Tacoma. After, so yeah, okay. after Tacoma. So, okay. yes. Yeah. Now, one of the things I would like for you to talk about is encouraging people mm-hmm. to attend, or I should say, compete in competitions. Oh, yes. And why should they? Because it teaches you, if you, you're not really competing against anybody else but yourself. Because it teaches you timing. It teaches you that you have a schedule. It te- yeah, deadline. It teaches you, you know, how to put an act under 10 minutes and be the strongest 10 minutes. I always tell my contestants that are competing in the International Brothers of Magicians, have a strong eight. Strong eight. Because you can always add, but once you go over the 10, you're disqualified. That's so a have good a point. strong, yeah, because you're a strong act. If you're a comic, does the magic, you gotta remember the laughter applause, the timing. Uh, you have to wait if they're going to applaud for you or laugh for you. You've got to end that because you can't say, well, laugh for two minutes, and that's why I went over. If you have some music, that's always something good because actually that's time. Actually, course, but... let's just say that. When I competed, I used m- music mm-hmm. as a form of timing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I knew when the, when the music was over, I, I was over. So, yeah. I hadn't thought about this, but also it wouldn't be a bad idea, I think, even for a comedian, comedy magician to have music behind him because of, or her, because of the uh, syncopation, uh, you know, the the tempo of that, that you can time your laughter and allow the uh, people to appreciate and applaud going counting one, two, Two, three. three. And if you actually have music in the background, you don't have to imagine that. You actually have that tempo. Right. And, uh, and, And for those who are just doing speaking parts, Always have a watch or something that's going to vibrate. It's going to tell you, I got, I got yeah. a minute to, to close or I got a minute so you won't go over. Yeah. But you always try. Competing is only beneficial to you as the entertainer. I mean, if you decide to make magic as, as, a, as a profession or just do it on the weekends, you still got to know timing. You still got to know, all right, I, it's time to finish. Oh, no, when to wrap up. You know, but so much. We want to give more. But we know that we only have time. I remember a good friend of mine yelling at me once for going overtime. Mm-hmm. You know, and you learn really quickly <laughs> <laughs> that it's not just you; it's the people that are behind you. They gotta, you know, equal the time that they're allotted right. on stage. So I want to also point out that competitions are not just for adults. I was no, talking with right. my friend John Grabeel several years ago, in which he was listening to the podcast. He said, "I didn't realize that uh, competitions are also for youth." And he said, "My children then got involved and has changed their lives. Uh, they become more extroverted and interested in sure. not necessarily just in magic. Yes, they are, but they also have." learn to have more confidence. That's you know, the that word. Way. I think that is you hit it right nail on the head is that you develop confidence within yourself. Mm-hmm. It's not ag- uh, arrogance. It's confidence. Knowing that you can get up and talk on anything. Right. right. You know, it so doesn't it's, have to be magic. It's a good thing for children to learn. Sure, and what course. is the age group, by the way? Uh, how young can people be to uh, kids? Uh, Once you're a member of IBM, if you're 15... And, uh, I believe it's 15. Is it now? Okay. Yeah, 15. Uh, you can compete. Okay. Yeah. So it's just 15 to 18 as junior? Junior, right, right, okay. right. And then adults, well, obviously. I thought we had changed that to 11 because it was older and they reduced it down to 11. Maybe they haven't. I, might be, I might be wrong, but I'll check and get back to you. But yeah. <laughs> There we go. Uh, but the uh, the point is I would encourage people, oh, yes. not, I mean, thinking, okay, well, I'm not an adult. Well, you don't have but to be an adult. Too early, yeah. You're never too early to even to start. Right. I mean, because you can do it in your local ring or assembly. Mm-hmm. Or you can have, little, uh, you know, which would be great for the local rings and assemblies to have within themselves a contest mm-hmm. who might be the ring or the assembly might say, you know what, we'll support you as a youth to go to the national convention and compete or go to regional convention and compete. Mm-hmm. So it creates and fosters uh, un- unity within the ring or the assembly. Yeah, right. Well, uh, you've been an inspiration then also oh. to a lot of people by Cindy leading, Scott, leading the way. Well, you. thank you. But leading the way as far as entering competitions and then putting your money where your mouth is in the standpoint, exactly. you know, that you actually said, oh, I'm going to take charge of the contest for all these years. How many years have you been doing this? Thing? Uh, better part of 10 years. I thought for quite yeah. some time that yeah, you have. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. and Melody have done a great it was, job. It, it was it been an honor to, to, to work with the International Brotherhood Magicians, but also it's an honor to work with those people. Mm-hmm. They may not have made it first place. They may not have even placed but the cool thing is we develop friendships and families. Yeah. Um, one of the ones that made it big but never won the Gold Cubs was Shimlin. 
That's right. Well, I remember that you very know? well. Yeah. I mean, and you were one of the judges. We sat well, there for, yeah. what, hours discussing yeah. this. Yeah. And, and But look at him now. That's right. You know, I mean. That's the point. But it's good to, good, I, good to know that we, mm-hmm. meaning you and I and all the other judges and his friends, were part of making him the success that he is today, right. or at least giving him the confidence to go out there and compete in the national, international world of magic. I would say also, when people are considering competing next year for FISM, the North American Championships, they really are going to need to step up their game because yes. you're going to be competing on a world Ooh, level. Yes. And so if there are some opportunities, I'm talking now to you out there who are listening, who are com- uh, potential competitors, to look at some of these videos of other foreign acts, yes. particularly look at past winners. And I mean, don't want you to be discouraged thinking, I can never do that, I'm out. Wait, 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 wait. Well, it, this is what I like to tell people. Is if you're deciding to compete at a at the FISM level, you should have a team. Yes, oh, that's a good advice. Have a team. A good friend of mine uh, who won the North American champion, Sir McDonald, had a team. Yes. He, he had myself, Sean Farquhar, and others who he would contact, send videos. We'd go, why you do this? Why did you do that? What if you did this? What if you did that? And he not only listened to one person, he had a team, a theatrical, lighting, sound, costume. It was just a team of people that helped him to succeed in the North American Championship. Well, I know Brent Braun does that as well. Like the people who are going to be on Penn and Teller Foolis, that are going to right. be on America's right. Got right. Talent. You know, like after they go gone forward, okay, what do we do next? And they'll contact Brent, Brett, Brent, and others about that. And I think it's important if you do want to be successful, don't Pray rely just on yourself, because as it's much as you think you can do it all, you really can't. Right, right. I mean, look at the guy who won at the FISM that we saw at, at uh, Magic Live. It was just not him. It was a group of people that created that whole entire act. Yeah. But we saw the man up front who created the, the, and made the, the, the magic happen. So don't be afraid to reach no, out to yeah. other magicians, Never. particularly in your club or whatever, right, to right, say, right. what do you guys think? And, and to show these other people uh, in your club your act and get advice. When I remember, I, before I go to the Magic Castle, uh, I usually am working in the close-up room or even the parlor that I will do that act at the club and right. I will get ask for, advice. ask for advice. And I've gotten some tremendous which, which advice. Is, which is great because you learn how to take criticism, yeah. constru- constructive criticism. And the way I tell kids that or people that is listen to what they have to say. Don't get angry or upset if you don't hear what you want to hear. But understand that they're giving it out of the respect to the, to the art of magic. Sure. Because none of us want anyone to fail, right. right? So listen, and if it fits you and if it fits the way you're thinking or the character that you want to play, and take it in and experiment. Mm-hmm. What if they are right? You might be angry at them, oh, what, what is, you know, well, why did he say that? Because, you know, I think it should be done this way. Well, because he may look at, at it at a different From way. a director standpoint. Yeah, maybe. right, right, right. Or, and, and you should understand that when they're giving you a critique, it's not personal. Well, and I also say it's not necessarily just your choreography or your blocking or whatever. Uh, going back to the example I was just giving, I remember one time that I had done one, and Daniel Garcia was our right. club member, and he was uh, at the meeting, and he said, Scott, I'd suggest you do this, this, and this. And one of his suggestions, and I, I took to heart all of them, and I made right. my changes right. because I trust what he says. But not only that, one of the minor things was I've got like an Apple Watch, and so it will it'll flash on and right. off, and he said that's distracting. You need to remove your watch. Wow. I mean, well, such I a minor thing. That. No. I wouldn't have So every time that. I work at the castle, I take off my watch backstage. Well, that, that you know, that's an interesting because <laughs> I would never have thought of that, which is amazing. But see, but that little tweak, that yeah. little thing just made you a lot better. Yeah. You know. It's distracting, and, yeah. Right, right. And so they're thinking of going out and competing at, at uh, the, the FISM. I think SCM and TUM, uh, a great mixture that would uh, help other magicians. Uh, you know, they can always reach out to me or they can reach out to any of the members and say, hey, i like to compete. What do you think about this? And again, uh, it only helps you and you never know. I mean, it can open so many doors for you. The right. Gold Cups for me, uh, I had no... Uh, in my time, when I was growing up, I had like four TAOM trophies, which gave me the confidence to go to the national competition. Uh, and from there, um, I didn't really have another jump start or another yeah. thing to go to the Level, FISM. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, but I think, you know, uh, the Gold Cups opened a lot of doors for me back back in the day. Mm-hmm. You know, now, uh, God's will, I'll be 60 in October. Mm-hmm. If I keep my body from hurting so much, uh, maybe I'll, you know, go back, go uh, and see other conventions. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good advice. We could talk for hours. Oh, yes, and Thank yes. you guys very much, Oscar. It's thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. So the Magic Word Podcast. That was Oscar Munoz. This is Scotty Allen.
I think it's appropriate we actually, of course, get around to talking to the president of the uh, TAOM for this year in 2023. And I have been just kind of stayed out of his way because I know how busy that he's been. I've done that myself. And so it's kind of hard to even to pull a few minutes away. But I was able to do that. And here he is right now. My friend and yours, he is the president of uh, this year's TAOM, Mr. Dick Olson. Hey there, Richard. How are you? Hi, Scott, and welcome to all your listeners. So thank you very much for all that you've uh, done. It's been, it, it, although it's been a year, it probably seems like 20 that you've been working. It, it does, but you know what makes it so good? I've had such a great team of people that helping and putting this together. You couldn't have done it without the people, as such as yourself. But also Gene Protus and Jamie Slinus. The three of us are the, really the organizers of the convention. But then we have people like uh, Rick Haber, who did the contest, uh, we have a big staff of people checking people in, Bert and Bert Rosenbluth has been our, our registrar and our co-chairman on it, so we, it's just been excellent. Plus the many people who are parts of those committees uh, as, as well. Right. Yeah, people that are helping, uh, you know, handing out the tickets and uh, uh, steering people to the right places in the hotel. You know, it's, it, it, Lee Weiss has set up the the, the, web, the website for us, so lots and lots of people. That it's and I know this has been challenging, or I should say that you have come across many challenges right up to the last minute. Even we were talking about Mario the Magician, who is supposed to be doing a show right now, but T.J. Johnson had to fill in. So. Yeah, we were so excited to have Mario... Uh, come and do the show, and then two days ago we got the message that uh, uh, his father-in-law was having some health issues and they, they couldn't afford to come out for it. So CJ uh, was able to come in and fill in for us. So that's, right. the, the show is actually going on right now as we sit here and talk. <laughs> and that's open to the public. And so how public ticket sales been going? I, you know, I haven't had a chance to really go check, but I think there's quite a few people that uh, have signed up for that. We had a very good show last night that you emceed and did a great job. And you have come full circle. We were just talking about some of the time that you first came to Houston and now becoming president. Well, it, really, it's, it's an interesting story. I came to my first magic convention in 1996. It was the TAOM here in Houston. So now coming full cycle 27 years later, now I'm the president of the organization and uh, just couldn't be happier to, to be be the person that's doing this. So yeah, it's, it's yeah. a wonderful experience. Doing a great job. And there, as I said, have been some challenges and also some, some things that are satisfying. And I'm sure going back uh, in a few days, you'll be able to look back, actually take a breath. You can't look back probably for a few weeks until you, this kind of sinks in. Right. But are there still some things that you are looking forward to that uh, it's like, oh, I can't wait for the rest of the people to enjoy what my excitement is about here? Right. Well, one of the things that I'm really excited about is the talent that we've been able to get to come to the convention, such as uh, Steve Valentine, uh, who rarely comes to conventions, but uh, we were able to finagle and get him not only to come to the convention and present, or he'll be on the show tonight, but also tomorrow night he's doing a lecture for us, which is also very rare. And then Michael Finney was, is another one that was really an excellent find. Uh, Scott, you and I were able to sign him up uh, yeah. last year at the at the SISM right. thing. So it's it's wonderful to have Michael here, um, and then just all the other talent that David uh, 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 and Rangel was able to to uh, generate for us. Uh, Doug Kahn is going to be lecturing for us today. I think, I think it's today at three. I believe. I believe so. And Doug, I, I was able to see his lecture. Uh, in co- New yeah, in New Orleans a couple of weeks ago. Phenomenal lecture, and ju- I th- think the audience is just going to eat it up when they see that. So Yeah, I'm glad that it worked out such that he's going to be giving an afternoon lecture because we have a chock of block of schedule. I, I mean... We've got, I think tonight is the Midnight Madness begin like at one thirty or something in the morning? Or? I think it's 12.30 when it starts, but okay. yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I told in my, I talked in my opening letter that's uh, in the program that um, uh, pr- uh, pretend to, or just uh, prepare to be sleep deprived <laughs> because we start early in the morning at like 8.30 in some of the days and we go to 2 o'clock there have been some overlapping things, too. Oh, yeah. There's been some. It's, there's a lot of stuff going on here. We may have overloaded the schedule, but we wanted to make sure that uh, Houston put on an excellent 
convention for, for everybody. We have a reputation that we have to live up to. I think we've met it. I think Houston is shining bright right now. You know, this is Space City and the uh, home of the stars, and I think we've reached for the stars, and we've attained that, I believe. Yeah. Well, and particularly, you know, last night's show was especially good because it was all Houston magicians. Uh, we started the show with David and Jake Rangel, and then we had uh, Bill Palmer, the, our uh, guest of honor at the convention, and followed by Harry Maurer. And, boy, what top acts. Uh, the show may have gone a little long, cause it, uh, uh, but it was, it was great. It was, it was phenomenal. Very solid. I, I heard no complaints about, uh, about the show at all last night, other than the convention room was a little bit cool. You know? <laughs> Keep people awake. Yeah, the hotel uh, maybe have dialed down the, the AC just a little bit too much. But, uh, you know, maybe expecting more bodies. Yeah, well, it could have, could have been, but it was, it was really good. So. But the hotel has been really wonderful as far as the amenities that we've had. We've, uh, the food, the, the staff that has been helping us uh, have been on board and are happy that we're here. And everything is fairly new and renovated, and the rooms are great. I'm satisfied with everything all around. Well, one of the things that we were excited, we, we looked at every hotel in the Houston and Galveston area that could potentially be a, a site for our convention. You know, they had a big enough convention area. They, they could do the things we'd want it and at a price that we wanted to do. And all the other hotels fell off until we found this one, and they just jumped out at us. They wanted us. They want our business. They've been over backwards to help, uh, help us out. The rooms are wonderful. It's in a good location. Because one of the problems, as we all remember in the past, when we've had conventions in the downtown area, on Sunday, there's nothing open and made it really hard to people to eat outside of the hotel. So this way, we've got lots of things to do. Uh, we also set up the, uh, the limited registration for our guests because there's a lot of people, that, they like going to the shows, but they could care less about going to the convention. Well, that allowed us then to, to let the magicians bring their spouses on it as well. There were two other perks I need to address before we start to wrap up over here, and those are both due to John Midgley. Yes, John Mitchley prepared a special poster on Walter Zaney Blaney, and his thing is spectacular. We had them printed, signed, and numbered for all of our full registration uh, uh, guests that came to the, uh, the show. And then he also prepared one on Bill Palmer, the, our guest of honor at the hotel. Both of them are spectacular. And so our guests get both posters. Yep, as, all the registrants get free posters. Uh, yes. Yeah. So it's... Uh, you know, it's been a lot of fun. They're one of a kind. They, they really are. So. Yeah. If anybody might be interested in that, are we going to be having those available? We might think about uh, selling yes. those and send a poster or tube to them? Or? Yes. Uh, we haven't kind of worked out the details. Of, but anybody here that wants to buy them, you know, we have them available. If they want to contact you and get more details, they contact yeah, you? they could contact me, and uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, it's uh, uh, O-L-Y-S-O-N at S-W-Bell dot N-E-T. That's S W B E L L dot N E T. Yeah. Oleson at S W Bell dot net. Got it. Okay. And then you can ask and then that you're interested and he can give you some de- Dick will give you some details. Right. Sounds great. Yeah. Dick, thank you very much for doing a great job. Okay. Well thank you very much, Scott. It was always fun and thank you for all the help you've given us doing the marketing for the program and the publicity. So we we're very happy with what's going on. I think it's uh, done well and thank you again. So for the Magic Word Podcast, uh, that was Richard Olson. President of the 2023 Texas Association of Magicians. This is Scotty Out. We are here with Michael Finney, who was the MC for the evening show, and he is one of the uh, outstanding talents here at this uh, convention for the TAOM. And it's good to see you. Have uh, you had a good time so far? Yes, it's been really enjoyable. I mean. Uh, it started Friday night with a really good show. I really enjoyed Harry. and uh, Harry Mauer did a great job. He killed it. Yeah. Now, you were here th- early on Thursday. You did, like, a private show or something or, like, public yes, or I, what? Yes, I have to mention that uh, Harry Mauer does a little private show on Thursday nights at an Italian restaurant. And uh, he was gracious enough to ask me if I wanted to come in and do the night and, and relax before the convention, which... These days, I need a little time to just yeah, relax and sure. unwind. So it was great spending uh, Wednesday night with Harry and Carol Ann, and then the show Thursday night, and then the, obviously they drove me down up here to 
the to the convention, and and it, they made the whole thing really an easy go for me. Well, I wish I was still in Houston, so that way I could have joined you. I would have loved to have seen the show Thursday night. We had a great time, and um, I will duplicate that tomorrow night. And so tomorrow night you're going to be lecturing or not? You're lecturing tomorrow? Or you're just no, I'm just doing my evening show with Rob Lake. And so Rob's going to be the uh, evening uh, performer. And so as past president of the, uh, past international president of the International Magicians, uh, International Brotherhood of Magicians, sorry, you have uh, also been a person who has been going out and uh, helping to uh, solicit more membership. And so, well, obviously you want to promote as much as you can in that position. You have the opportunity to do it and it kind of validates. But, you know, I, I'm, I will never be able to explain or express to anyone what magic has done in my life. Um, mm. I, I probably, you know, somehow would have succeeded at something, but never as grand as what I've been able to do with magic. And so magic just gave me an opportunity, and I think it gives a lot of people who try it an opportunity to find something else about themselves. And when I started doing magic, it, it made me feel complete. It right. made me feel as though... You know, I could do something, and it would be me, and it's me, and I get to call the shots, and so I tried to learn as much as I could from as many people as I could, which is why at this time in my life I miss so many of the people that helped me. But I uh, like adore. the fellow in Phoenix, who uh, what was the fellow's name who had run the magic shop? That well, was that in? was Bert Easley. Yeah, Bert Easley, the vaudevillian right. magician yeah. known as the Tipsy Trickster. Yep. It was his son, Herb Easley, and then it was Jack Sutherland who was my mentor. Jack's the guy I'm thinking of, yeah. Yes, Jack. I spent time with him uh, in the very beginning. I used to go, I used to drive by the shop on the way to my bartending job at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, so I would always take another extra hour or half an hour to stop in and see Jack and find out what was going on. That's where I met Harry Anderson. Um, Jack said, come in a little early Harry today. Was there? I got somebody to meet. I want you to meet. <laughs> and it was Harry. Town? And, and, and Harry uh, had learned from Jack. Jack was one of Harry's mentors back in the day. Really? And we were both pallbearers at Jack's funeral, and that's our connection and how we became friends. So I thought Harry was an Austin magician. Uh, been well, around here. originally, a lot of his stuff came through Phoenix. And he huh. may have been in Austin. That may have been that. But I met him in Phoenix through Jack. Yeah. yeah. And I know that he traveled through Phoenix with his first wife, I believe. And mm -hmm. um, I didn't know much about him, but I had seen him on TV. And then getting getting to meet him and hang out with him a little bit. Now, and, that wasn't back when you had the, uh, uh, the Finney Bones, was nope. it? Nope. You know what? Um, Harry was such a big star by the time Finney Bones came along that I didn't get to see him as much then. And it wasn't until after that we got to reconnect again. Yeah, and you were good friends. Yes, Harry. I mean, who doesn't love Harry Anderson? And, and he, right. it was him that, you know, put a hand out to me and welcomed me. Yeah. And that was, you know, that was a confidence builder. And, and even Jack said to Harry, he goes, you better watch him. He's going he's gonna to be funny. And so Harry Harry just put put his arm around me and said, welcome to the club. You know, and so that, that was... That was, that was a and highlight you felt like you're life. part of the group yeah, then all yeah, of a sudden. Yeah, Because I was, you know what, guys like Harry knew nobody was a threat to him. There was nothing, nothing to worry about. And so he was kind. And, uh -huh. and so he deserved all of the sex, success he ever got. Yeah. Well, and the same with you. I think you've deserved all the success you've had. And you've been I learned, working in so I many learned, places. I learned by imitating what those other people did That's right. and how to you get along in this business. stand on the shoulders business. of giants. Yes, yes, sir. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you've done a wonderful job here this evening. It was uh, great seeing you in this evening show. You did a wonderful job. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow as well. Thank you so much, Scotty. I, I'm, now, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow night. I kind of set myself up for a good time tomorrow yeah. by getting to do what I got to do and doing straight stand-up. So tomorrow is going to be, you know, I'll be in my, my environment, Irrelevant, my yeah. wheelhouse, and it, it's <laughs> going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to make this crowd laugh. And so it's going to be some of the stuff from your CD? Uh, a little bit from the CD, but mostly I'll be doing my magic. Uh, dry my, heat. My, my feigned style, oh, yeah. Oh. Well, yeah. I did some of that tonight. I'll try oh, to touch yeah, yeah. on lightly tomorrow. <laughs> I wanted to separate the two, and I, it was a great opportunity Perfect for me to Houston. do that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Michael, you're a good buddy, and I appreciate uh, you coming here and being here. Scotty, thank you so much for all your kindness. You know I appreciate you. Of course. So the Magic Word Podcast. That was Michael Finney, Scotty out.
We've just finished the evening show right now, and there are more activities that are happening here on uh, uh, Saturday night. And one of the people that I want to talk with is someone, Magical Katrina, who is one of our performers. And she just got in today from Burning Man, actually. She was out uh, uh, in California or Nevada. Where is that, actually? Black Rock City, which is Burning Man, is in Nevada. Nevada. There you go. And so she's going to be one of the performers who's going to be... Uh, uh, lecturing here shortly as in fact she's on a panel discussion she's going to be performing and everything anyhow please welcome my guest uh magical katrina hey katrina how are you hello i'm good <laughs> so are you anxious to come to this convention it's the first time you've actually performed here i believe at the uh, taom yeah i've never been to taom before and i'm very excited it's actually my first in-person mm -hmm. lecturing i've lectured virtually a lot and i've done a penguin right. lecture but this is my first time in person, so it makes it a lot easier to throw tomatoes or flowers at me. <laughs> <laughs> so are you a little bit uh, kind of trepidatious? I mean, you're a little bit kind of nervous a little bit as far as uh, this being your first live lecture? Well, so my lecture, I think, is going to be awesome. I Everything I'm teaching is stuff that I have tested and has made me successful and make a living, so I think... I think it's going to be great. No matter where you are in your career, you'll learn something. Or if you're right. a hobbyist, you'll learn something. And everything is actionable and helpful. Um, so I'm really excited about the lecture. I'm a little nervous to do the close-up magic because fooling magicians is a lot harder than laymen. Well, that's true. Now, you were on Penn & Teller Fool Us, and you were doing some fire reading, as I recall. And that was kind of hard to fool Penn. Um, you just confused me with Jessica Jane. I thought that you did some fire eating. No, no. I'll, Carissa Hendricks and Jessica Jane are both babes and both do fire eating, <laughs> okay. uh, but I am neither of them, but we are all redheads. Uh, Jessica Jane, I think, did something with ash on her arm. But you did do I did. An, yes, I did. It's okay. I, I'm very flattered to be confused. And it's funny because I think Lucy Darling slash Carissa Hendricks also mm. fire eats. So I think it's a fiery redhead female magician thing. Must be. Yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, I actually, I did a an out of this world with photos of people. Oh, that's right. I, and I, uh, right, right, right. with a prediction at the end. And that's something you'll be teaching in your lecture? Yeah, I'm going to be teaching that in my lecture. And it's great because you can do it with all sorts of themes. It doesn't have to be photos of men and women. It can mm -hmm. be photos of anything. So it's great. And as I recall, didn't you do this also on uh, Masters of Illusion? Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, they wanted me to do it there too. And uh, and I have a children's version where I have them help me pick out a pet, which is pretty mm -hmm. adorable. Yes, very cool. So as far as uh, you coming here against first convention, have you worked at other conventions and performed your lecture, or is this your first time lecture ever, anywhere? Um, I've performed the lecture at a few different rings. Um, I did it at IBM's Ring 1 in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. I, I, th I hope I got that right. Please <laughs> fact check. Please comment St. on Louis. this. yeah. Oh, yes. Please comment if Ring 1 is somewhere else. Um, and I did that virtually. So I've done variations of this lecture for different online uh, things. Uh, and it's kind of shaped it. It was first a Frankenstein lecture of like four different topics. And then I organized it. And I just made it 52 hacks and tips and tricks. I remember when you were doing some Zoom things during... Um uh, for the Magic Castle, I believe, and some other kinds of things, that right? Yeah, I did a virtual magic show for the Magic uh, Academy of Magical Arts, Magic Castle, and um, that was really fun. I can't ever really do that show, though, because it was an 18-minute show where I was stuck in a time loop, and it was Groundhog's Day, so uh. it's <laughs> it's not really possible to go to a, like Timmy's seventh birthday and be like, where am I? I'm reliving the day over and over again. <laughs> like that people would be like, is she okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but it was really fun to do for the castle. <laughs> so you also were on uh, Masters of Illusion, is that right? Or, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I was on Masters of Illusion. And I also toured Mexico with Champions of Magic. And sometimes I confuse them and I say Masters of Champions of Illusion of Magic. I kind of get those confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so you're in Mexico. And so who else were you working with? Uh, oh, it was awesome. Young and Strange did Illusions, and um, Alex, uh, oh my God, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm on one hour of sleep because I came in from Burning Man, so I'm kind of, oh, Alex McClear was the mentalist. Oh yeah, Alex. And, um, oh my gosh, this really amazing escape artist, and I should know his name, and this is very embarrassing. Because uh, I can't remember his name right now. But Holly England took your place, right? 
Yeah, well, so she, I would say she took more Kayla Drescher's place. I was a temporary sub so during Kayla COVID. Kayla was first, and then you, and then... I think it was actually Gay, or no, Faye Presto. Faye Presto did the tour in England, and then Kayla took over for a few years. And then um, I think Kayla still was doing it, but she had some immune problems in hmm. COVID. Uh, have no fear, so I just did it. <laughs> during, uh, it was 2021, I think, and... Um, then and I just did it for like a short run, and then Holly England did it and took mm-hmm. over. I don't know who's who's doing it now. I think Holly may still be doing. Well, it. she's doing Monday Night Magic. Well, that's true. But perhaps they're taking a break because I know they aren't constantly on tour. I don't think. Um, but so. it was it was really fun. It was one of the most professional, um, exhilarating, chaotic, and just rewarding and wonderful tours and things I've ever done. And every time you go out on stage. You're like magically appear, and there's just probably thousands of dollars of pyrotechnics, and you just feel like a rock star. So How did you get contacted for that? Um, uh, Alex, and I can't remember his name, who's the producer, he reached out to me, and um, Misty Knight from right. Kyle and Misty, right. she recommended me. And she's great. She also books cruise ships, too, and mm-hmm. she always is helping other women and is really, really awesome. I love Kyle and Misty. Have you done some cruise ships? I have not yet. I, uh, I'm repped for it, but I haven't uh, done them yet. I think after COVID, they're not booking as much. Um, so you hope to soon? I hope to. I think it'd be fun. I, I mean, you get a free cruise. That sounds awesome. But you're also <laughs> really lonely, I've heard. So yeah. I think that I'll do it, and I'll enjoy it for a, the novelty, and I'll probably read all of Tarbell finally because I'll be so bored. Yep. Well, <laughs> I'm looking forward to uh, hearing your uh, talk a little bit later as far as the panel discussion goes, and I'm glad that you're here. Yay, thank you so much for having me. This is such an honor. I am so excited and honored to be here with all of these wonderful magic makers. We have the coolest job ever. We really do. Thank you very much. And so that for the Magic Word Podcast, that was Magical Katrina, Scotty Allen.